Hello, everyone. We will get started right at uh, on the top of the hour. So we have approximately a minute and a half left to go before we get started. If you want to take a moment in the chat box and just let us know where you're coming from, where you're joining us from, that would be great. And maybe how's the weather where you're at? All right. So it's two o'clock and I think we will get started. I'm cognizant of the time and I don't want to take up too much of people's time um, here in Winnipeg. It's pretty nice out. So it'd be nice to be able to get outside and, and enjoy some of the sunshine before the rain comes, which I think it might come today. I'm not sure. I actually never really checked. So today, um, my again, my name is Diane Bryan. I'm the manager of health promotion here at 17 Wing Winnipeg. And today I'm joined by Leanne Brooks. She is one of the fitness instructors here at 17 Wing Winnipeg. So today what we're going to be talking about is, is tracking your progress or revisiting those goals that you made. So it's been eight weeks now since we started this series about getting ready. So we decided that we would look at um, look at some of the goals, how we, how you've been doing, and hopefully we'll be able to provide you some tips if the goals aren't going where they, where you wanted them to go. So the session today should last about 40 to 45 minutes. That's, that's what we've scheduled. We do have a full hour if we need it. We will be using the chat box for any questions or comments. So please feel free to write in whatever you need to or ask any questions along the way. We're both more than happy to be able to answer any questions that we can. So in case you've missed any of our sessions, here's a list of the sessions with the uh, corresponding Demio link. So if you'd like to rewatch a session or look at it again, hi, Melissa, thanks for joining us. Um, let us know um, or take a picture of this and then you can you can go to uh, re rejoin one of our sessions in case you've missed something. So the standard before we get started slide. So the presentation that you're about to view is the intellectual property of the Department of National Defense. So any reproduction or retransmission of the slides contained in this presentation is strictly prohibited. Unless I actually told you to take a picture of it and I'm okay with that. Um, some of the topics discussed in this webinar may be of a sensitive nature and not appropriate for children. Uh, in the case of this one, I think um, most of what we're going to talk about uh, is probably fine for children, but just be aware that um, some of the things that we may be discussing throughout the, this whole series may be not appropriate to certain uh, ages of children and just use your discretion. We understand that people's stories are theirs alone to tell and that uh, anything that's shared in the webinar uh, is not to be discussed outside of the webinar. So we're pulling the Vegas rule. So what happens here on the webinar stays in the webinar. This webinar is being recorded for viewing later on CAF Connection and eventually to be posted on the uh, National PSP YouTube channel. 
So we really appreciate active participation, but if you simply want to just listen, uh, that is fine as well. We will only be using the chat function for uh, communication. We will not be using, uh, I will not be turning on cameras and microphones today. All right, so let's find out who's all on the line. So we'll start with a poll. So if you wouldn't mind letting us know what your affiliation with the CAF community is, whether you're a military member, or a veteran, a family member, civilian employee, or other. It's good. We have a nice mix today of military members, veterans, and civilian employees. I like it. All right. So I'm now going to hand over the mic. I'm going to um, mute my picture and my microphone. And I'm going to pass it over to Leanne. All right. So welcome, guys. As Diane said, that I am a fitness and sport instructor. Um, we are talking about uh, reevaluating goals. Um, one thing I would like to ask, I'd like to start off with a poll. Did you guys, at the beginning of the series, when we did SMART goals, uh, did anyone uh, actually create a SMART goal for themselves? Oh, cool. Okay, so a couple of people did uh, do a SMART goal. Wonderful, wonderful. That's partly what this whole uh, series was about. Um, how good were we at achieving these goals? Like, were you achieving the goals that you set out in the beginning? Or were, were there some obstacles that you faced in the process? So basically, did you achieve a really good goal in the beginning and felt it was really smart and in sync with what you wanted to accomplish? Uh, and how are you doing with those goals? You can uh, let us know in the chat and we will also have a chance to share. Um, I want to share one of my examples with you. And then if you guys want to chat and uh, share an example as well, that would be great. Uh, Running, I'll give you an example, is not one of my one of my forties, and uh, I don't often run outside. I tend I tend to stick to the treadmills, so I decided that uh, I wanted to take up running outside a little bit more, and uh, I knew it was a really good idea to acclimatize myself to running outside, especially with. Uh, when COVID hit, because it hit around March, we knew the weather was gonna get nicer. So I set a goal for myself that it was a perfect opportunity to acclimatize myself with the weather and to become more proficient at running outside. Uh, I also assessed that I would have enough time to be able to invest in running in this endeavor outside and start picking up the mileage. I even enlisted my 12 year old son to run with me and become a running partner. Uh, unfortunately, as the COVID progressed, he did not maintain a level of excitement with uh, running with me. So he decided to not continue running. And uh, as COVID progressed even more, I got immersed in dealing with school assignments and virtual classes. And the next thing I knew, it was July was coming upon us. And all of a sudden, we were getting into the 25, 30 degree heat. And I definitely knew that I was not acclimatized properly as I had planned. And so my running plan did not go as planned. Uh, so the obstacle essentially was the motivation that lost when I lost my, my running partner, my son. 
And uh, it was a good learning experience because I learned maintaining that running partner was instrumental for my motivation. Um, and then also the priorities uh, shifted from running. So basically you get into the idea of conflicting priorities. So the priorities ended up shifting to uh, maintaining uh, academics with the kids. So the, the goal completely shifted altogether. So in the chat, does anyone have any similar examples with, uh, with maintaining a goal? So first of all, was anybody successful with the goal and, uh, and be able to uh, successfully complete a SMART goal? All right, going on the next slide then. Uh, okay, so the next issue is one thing that we can think about is when uh, faced with a plan that is not going as well as we hoped, um, when do we know when do we reevaluate the goal rather than abandon it altogether? So what are the feelings attached when you take the time to set up a really good smart goal and then it seems to go off the rails? Most common, the, the feeling is that when it failed to achieve the goals, right? So the sense of failure. Um, and we have the, the uh, perception that it is much easier to abandon the goal when there's a sense of failure, right? So I found this quote from Olin Miller and it said, you would worry about, you wouldn't worry about what people may think of you if you could know how seldom they do. Oh, Leticia started out strong in March with my own running goals. Good. Excellent. And then, and that, oh, and then a spouse deployment. Okay. So that would really throw things out of whack and, and definitely trying to juggle many different priorities. Oh, and an infant too. Wow. Wow. So yeah, so that makes perfect sense uh, how, how to keep on track with the goal. Excellent. Excellent. And as uh, Diane is saying, uh, yeah, so this, this session might be really good to see when do we reevaluate the goal, right? Or abandon it completely and how do we get back? So, so perfect. All right, moving on to the next slide. Diane, if you have anything you want to add. I perp okay, Leona purposely set what I thought was attainable goals. Good. <laughs> and then it comes to that sense of, or feeling of uh, failure when we don't live up and then you're like, oh, well, you know, then abandon it altogether, right? All right, so what do we do in this situation? What do we do in this situation? So how, do, how can we cope with knowing that things are not going as well as we had planned? So number one, acknowledge your emotions. So I think it's very, very a uh, valid position to take a minute to allow the mo to allow yourself the emotions associated with having to reevaluate your goals. Uh, it's okay to be frustrated. It's okay to be angry. Okay, so the key is not though to to dwell or be consumed by those emotions. So it's okay to allow yourself oh, the frustration, the annoyance, and maybe the anger that goes with it, but then we have to be able to not dwell on it and move on, right? So take a minute to allow. 
And then the second one that is basically identify irrational beliefs associated. So this one would be like, oh, I just, the one that I tell myself all the time is, oh, I just suck at running. I just suck. I just suck. Or I screwed up or, or I'm a failure. So basically you just have to take a look at is where's the irrational, irrational belief coming into it. And then identify any, um, adopted behaviors that are not helping you in the situation. So these could be maybe adding um, additional barriers, um, whether stress eating, uh, in my particular case with the COVID and the, the, the fact that I wasn't uh, running like I wanted, I was uh, trying to balance the academic by the time the end of the day, I actually realized that I was stress eating more at the end of the day than I was before COVID hit. So is there any other things that we are doing that could constitute putting additional barriers up? And then number four is recognizing your own appropriate level of responsibility um there are things that we cannot control in life and we cannot control everything we can we could not control um the fact that covid hit we could there there are injuries that happen that are out of our control there there are things that that we just do not have any responsibility to that and basically allowing yourself to um appropriate labeling your own ownership to the issues. So for example, um, I had the time, I had a treadmill in the basement. So basically, I have um, the time, the opportunity, and I have the fortunate of having the equipment, but I st still did not take the opportunity to pursue running. So I still did not take the opportunity to go or find an alternative mean. So that would that would be my responsibility. And then finally, the last one is to research and learn about what worked and what didn't work in this scenario. There is always something to be learned. Um, you learn that you don't, for example, may not have the time commitment to do two hours of running a day. So maybe the one thing that we got to do is what you got to learn about uh, your current situation is that if that is an unrealistic expectation to run two hours a day, what is a realistic expectation? <coughs> Excuse me. can't binge watch TV and get out for a walk. That is true. Okay, so just uh, check, checking in with the chat line here just to see if anyone's want to add anything. Uh, I managed to run smaller 5K runs. That's right. So, so when you're registered for smaller 5K runs, again, that's adapting to the situation and thinking about what is realistic or what you can change. So if 10K is a little more difficult or a half marathon is a little bit more of a challenge for you to be able to do, well, 5K runs are just as fine and just as good to take a look at what commitment you can add or can contribute. Excellent. Alrighty. <clears throat> so for the next slide is another quote. And I'm sure most of us have heard this quote before from Alexander Graham Bell. So it's when one door closes, another opens, but often we look so long and regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the one that which has opened for us. So that is so true. So when when we have a goal, uh, I wanted to go running, 
Uh, I wanted to take up running outside. I want to get proficient at running outside. Um, and then COVID hit, I got immersed. Uh, that didn't work out so well. Well, you know what? I'm, I still have to take a look. We are still in the summer. The weather is beautiful. And I started picking up running. I started doing, okay, I'm not as acclimatized to uh, a 10K walk. I'm not uh, acclimatized to do 10K straight. So what can I do? Well, I can do 30, 30 second on, 30 second off interval run. And you know what? That got me motivated. I'm out the door and I'm off running outside. So basically also when uh, roadblocks often comes, we didn't expect COVID. Another example is um, virtual runs. So the a lot of runs, for example, were canceled uh, in the spring, the Air Force run. Army run is virtual this year. So a lot of things have decided to do virtual runs. So even though we can't go in person, but there is an opportunity to try something in a different way that still opens the door for us to accomplish the goal that we have set out by participating in a race. Okay. Next slide. All right, lessons to be learned through evaluations. So one notion is that um, it is okay for evaluation. Life is not just a, a compiled rigid set of rules and goals very much work the same way. There's no right or wrong set way to achieve your goals. Everybody's path in doing things is always slightly different. One way may not have worked, but another way uh, can work for you and a slightly different work, way can work for somebody else. So basically the idea of reevaluation is to really try to pigeonhole and find that, that best way that gets you the closest to the goals that you want to achieve. Right, you can learn new priorities, okay? And you can look back that things are, some things are not um, not as much of a priority for, for, for me or priority as they were. For example, my priority became my kids' academics opposed to running. And, and changing, shifting um, priorities is, is fine as well. All right, so there's no set way to achieve the goal. Um, flexibility. So basically being open-minded and flexible and being able to see things from a different angle or trying to, to be creative and trying to uh, solve problems. Uh, humility. Hum, humility. Um, that comes from the idea that it's not a bad thing if, if something isn't successful right away. So if I can't run 5K right away, can't run 10K right away, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. It doesn't mean that it's a negative thing. So focus on, okay, can't do that now. Be humble, humility, and say, okay, what can I do? Well, I can run 30 second sprints or I can run this or what, what can I do? And then the persistence, persistence. And this one is extremely key, that if it, if it doesn't work, keep trying and trying and being persistent to find the solutions, right? Because failures, although it's it, like that quote from Alexander Graham Bell, even though it's the ending of one point, it is often the starting point in a different way, right? And I like my husband, my husband and I talk about this uh, all the time. Uh, he's military and he talks about in survival, survival uh, situations that uh, persistence uh, to keep looking for other ways to be successful. If you guys have military background and think basic training, um, they often will throw things at you to make it a challenge it 
to, to challenge you, to, to make it harder, to throw obstacles in your way. And they say that they look for that persistence character because in at the end of the day is the persistence that basically is the will to continue on to make sure that the goals are accomplished at the end of the day. Okay. Wonderful. Anybody have any input at this point? Okay. Moving on. So we are familiar with uh, SMART goals. Okay. Now with SMART goals, we're familiar with them. They got it. They got to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic. Mavis and Diane did a wonderful presentation. And we're familiar with most of the benefits of um, establishing goals and SMART goals as they uh, allow you, they um, give you a little bit of direction and focus and clarity um, for what you want to accomplish. And a sense of motivation because then it's written down and it's, uh, it, you become accountable. Like the motivation um, that being held accountable to achieve your goals is actually is satisfying. Um, but sometimes what we don't talk about sometimes is uh, I'm going to briefly touch on some of the disadvantages um, goal setting can play here. And it, sometimes it creates um, a hyper focus uh, or what I call plan fixation. And uh, when we have something written down, it's almost like a contract. So when we know we have this goal and sometimes we get so fix fixated on accomplishing that goal in the manner that we set out, that sometimes looking at an alternative becomes a little more difficult because we want to accomplish it the way we set out in the in the first place also it, it when you actually set out to uh, create these goals for yourself that it can sometimes put uh, enhanced level of pressure and anxiety uh, on feeling that you have to accomplish the goals successfully um, also, failure to meet expectations can, um, when, when you take the time to get a really good plan and then it doesn't come into fruition, that sometimes it creates a greater sense of demotivation with it and can increase, um, can increase the likelihood of abandoning the plan altogether rather than looking at different strategies. Okay, so you guys have uh, been listening to me for long enough. So where we're at now is we are going to talk about a different strategy. So I'm going to turn it back over to Diane to go over this new strategy. Okay, Diane, Thanks, so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at this new method. It's not really a new method, but but definitely was new to me um, a little while ago of, of looking at goals and how we can achieve what we want to want to achieve. And maybe something that you can use to tweak your smart goal or um, or even a good way of, of being able to break down your SMART goal into smaller pieces. So it's called the WHOOP method, W-O-O-P. And it's an acronym that stands for WISH, Outcome, Obstacles, and Plan. So the WISH, the wish is, is like your goal. What do you want to create? in your life? What do you want to create right now? What do you want it to look like? So if it's for running, what do you want your running to look like? Do you want to be able to complete the 15k army run challenge? Is that what you want to do? So you have to think outcome, what would be the best case scenario of achieving that? What would be the best case scenario of achieving that? Right, that you actually get to complete it. And maybe you're doing it with uh, another friend or family member virtually as well. So being able to get it in the time perhaps that you would set out, that would be my best case scenario for achieving that. 
then you have to look at your obstacles. What are the obstacles that are going to get in your way? How will you get in your own way? So not only as Leticia was saying, having to, having a young an infant to be able to juggle with running and a partner who's deployed, but what about me that's getting in the way of accomplishing my goal or or completing my plan? Right? How is my how can I what what's getting in my way? It's because I no longer think I have the time to be able to do it, or the schedule when I wanted to do it isn't convenient now for me. Um, so we have to think about what are those obstacles. And then finally, we have to create that plan. What will you do about those obstacles when they arise? So we call that a if then. So if this obstacle happens, then this is what I'm going to do. Right, so a way of managing those expectations. The WHOOP method allows the original plan to be altered quickly for changing circumstances rather than going back and reevaluating the whole plan. It's kind of a fun thing to do. Has anybody ever used the WHOOP method before? If you wouldn't mind putting something in the chat box and letting me know, that would be great. This is new. Okay, I'm glad, Patricia. Okay, Lindsay. Well, let's see if this is something that you can use. So I have a handout for you. It looks just like this. Um, so I'll, I'll share it now for you. If you would like to have it all written out for you. The thing about the WHOOP method too is that it can be as short or long-term as you want to make it. You don't have to make it into uh, something that is super, super long. It could be in the next week, this is what I want to accomplish. And then looking at, so if this is what I want to accomplish, then what is what is that outcome that you're going to have? What's that best case outcome that you're going to have? What are those obstacles that are getting into my in my way of being able to achieve it? And then working out that plan. If those obstacles get in my way, then this is what I'm going to do. So if we look at the act, actual um, example that they have on this sheet that I've given you, they talk about what the wish is, that this person wants to practice yoga three times a week. It sounds like something that would be easy enough to do. So what is what is the, the outcome that they would that they would look, what would be the best outcome? That they'd feel better, that they'd be more confident, that they become more flexible. That's the outcome that they're looking for by practicing yoga three times a week. So what are the obstacles that are getting in their way? And for me, this actually would be an obstacle for me to going into a class is, is that I'm afraid to go into class because I think I'm not good at yoga. I think everybody else is way better than me when I'm there trying to stretch and I can barely touch my toes or I fall over as I'm trying to get into warrior one I'm thinking like, ah, I don't want people looking at me. Not that they are, but this is, this is my obstacle that I have to try and get over. So I need to make that plan. So if I feel afraid to go to yoga class, then I'll remind myself that the only way to get better is to keep practicing. Everyone was a beginner once. So that would be my if then plan, right? If I start to feel nervous or uncomfortable, then I need to remind myself that everybody started at the beginning at one time. So, and keep telling myself, and that would help me to reach that goal. Does that make sense to people? All right, so we're going to try a bit of WAP practice. You guys are all going to get a chance to try this. So what I want, want to, um, to let you know, before you start a, with the WHOOP exercise, you need to be aware that WHOOP is different from other exercises. WHOOP involves thoughts and images rather than rational or effort effortful thinking. So unlike making a smart goal where you're being rational and effortful, I want you to be able to use thoughts and images. 
It involves going slow and creating time and space for thinking and imagining. So this is not necessarily something that you're going to do um, when you need to be concentrating on something else. You need to be able to give yourself the time to sit and think about this. It's critical that no interruptions occur during the exercise. Start the WHOOP session when you feel calm and comfortable. This is your time now. Everything else has to wait. So clear your mind and create a space to imagine. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take uh, two or three deep breaths just so that you can get yourself centered and, and be able to think. So what I like to do is take a deep breath in and then release it. Another breath in and release it. And one more time, one more deep breath and release it. So what I'd like you to do is think about a wish, something that you want to accomplish in the next four to six weeks, something that is important to you. What is one wish that you would like to fulfill? Pick a wish that is challenging to you, but that you could reasonably fulfill in that time. Note your wish in three to six words. So what might your wish be? Once you have your wish in three to six words, then what I want you to do is think about the outcome. What's the best thing, the best outcome for fulfilling your wish? How would fulfilling your wish make you feel? And then note the best outcome in three to six words. So if my wish is to be able to complete the 15K army run, or the 300 kilometers that I'm going to be doing biking in August, that's my wish, then my outcome would be that I would feel a sense of accomplishment. I'd be really proud that I was able to complete that. First off, I've never done a 15K um, challenge before, so to be able to do that would make me feel really great. And to ride 300 kilometers in a month is another thing that would really push me forward and, and I'd have a great sense of accomplishment. Right? So what I want you to do is take a moment to imagine your best outcome. Imagine it as fully as you can. What does it feel like? What does it sound like if it has sounds around it? Can you visualize that outcome? Write those thoughts down. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the obstacle. So what is within you that holds you back from fulfilling your wish? What in you might stop you? It could be an ir irrational belief could be an emotion. It could be a bad habit. Think more deeply on it. What is it really? Identify your main inner obstacle. Note your main inner obstacle in three to six words.
for me, one of my main inner obstacles may be I just am going to feel too tired to want to go out for a long bike ride, or I'm going to feel too tired to want to go out and do 15K as a walk or, or walk run. But I want you to take a moment to imagine your main inner obstacle. Imagine it as fully as you can and write down your thoughts about that obstacle. Again, what does it feel like? What does it look like? And then lastly, we come to plan. What can you do to overcome your obstacle? Identify one effective action you can take or one effective thought you can think to overcome the obstacle. Note your action or thought in three to four, three to six words. So you need to make the following plan if the obstacle. So for me, if I'm too tired uh, to want to go outside, then what will I do? Then I will, what action or thought that you named, right? So if I'm too tired to go out for a bike ride, then I will go out for at least five minutes. I won't go out for the hour maybe that I wanted to, but at least I'll go out and do something. And then slowly repeat and imagine this if then plan. So if I'm feeling too tired or unmotivated to go out, I will get up then I will get up and I will go for at least five minutes and then see how I feel. You want to slowly repeat and imagine this if then plan in your head. What does, what's that look like? So that is WHOOP, basically. It didn't take very long to do. It took about five minutes, maybe, to be able to do a WHOOP and figure out what you were going to do. But it allows you to get some clarity and really take the time to look at those obstacles that get in your way, that kind of try to shut you down. So how did you do? Were you able to come up with a WHOOP? for the next four to six weeks. Nicely, Anne. Okay, Leona, glad to hear you got one. Hey, Leticia, would anybody like to share their whoop? All right, you don't have to share. It was just a just a question. But I think this this method um, is an is an, a good add on for a smart goal to be able to help you to maybe refocus around that smart goal 
or relook at sort of those obstacles that are getting in your way and stopping you from reaching whatever the goal is that you have. Are there any questions? All right, so our famous resources slide. So just a reminder that the Canadian Forces Members Assistance Program is out there to help you 24-7, 365 days of the year of referral service to be able to help you with any of the issues that you might be going through uh, at this time or any time in your life. This is also the same number for the uh, civilian EAP program as well. Canada's Suicide Hotline is there for you. If you or any of your family members or somebody that you care about is considering suicide as an option, please um, get them to seek out, uh, to reach out for help. Looking for information on COVID-19, uh, the Government of Canada website on coronavirus is a really good option. The Family Information Line, again, 365 days of the year, bilingual service that has actual counselors on the end of the line who are familiar with military lifestyle. So you, your family members, extended family members are able to phone this number. Sexual Misconduct Response Center deals with all things of a sexual misconduct nature. So if you or anybody you know has uh, been impacted by that, please get them the help that they need by calling that number. Kids Help Phone is there for you as well and your family members. So you can uh, text connect for the children or you can call that number. Adults can also use that number. Parents can if they're having some issues as well. The ARC line in support of COVID-19 is the Canadian Armed Forces uh, information line about all things COVID. So final poll. Do you feel that you can apply what you've learned today in your daily living? That is awesome. So glad to see that. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn back my camera on. Leanne's going to turn hers on as well and our microphone on if you want to contact us about any information that you've heard today uh, please feel free to contact us there's our contact contact information uh, Leanne's email address as well as mine so we're more than welcome to take um, any questions that you have if we don't know we'll find somebody who does know to be able to send that to you and then finally uh, here's a list of our upcoming sessions. So next week, uh, we'll have uh, Leon, Leona uh, Bond with us, and she'll be talking about stretching and its importance. So looking forward to having her with us today and, or next week. And uh, yeah, it will be fun. Any questions? Leanne, do you have any comments you'd like to make before we close out? Um. The only thing I would like to close out is thank you guys so much for attending this session today. And uh, absolutely, if you have any questions or want any additional information on this topic, feel free to branch out and get a hold of us. You don't have any sound at the moment, Diane.